G'day, this is Mr. Thompson. I'm going to create a quick video that shows you how to analyze um, and graph your data for your reaction rate experiment. So um, um, I'm going to presume uh, that you have got um, your data already loaded in. So uh, remember for each concentration, there's a concentration of half molar, one molar and two molar. Uh, that you've done your three trials, one, two, three, one, two, three. So three trials for each of those concentrations and you've recorded the mass of calcium carbonate. So the mass of marble chips that you uh, put in, uh, the time that you recorded for. Uh, now we tried to time for two minutes, but I'm thinking that um, for the for the lower molarity, you might have had, had to go for a bit longer. Um, and for the higher molarity, you may have had to go for a bit shorter. Um, it doesn't matter, whatever time you've put in there. And then also the volume of calcium carbonate, the, uh, no, not calcium carbonate, the volume of carbon dioxide that you've recorded for against each trial that, that you read from the measuring cylinder. So I'm going to presume that you've already done that. Um, and this is where you're starting from. And I'll show you how to go from here, how to calculate your reaction rates into here or how to get Excel to calculate that for you and then how to fill how to transfer your data to this little summary table over here and once we've got a summary table we can easily create a graph okay so first thing we're going to do is calculate the reaction rates so I'm going to come into this cell here type equals um, now the reaction rate is the milliliters the volume of carbon dioxide per minute so we need millimeters divided by minutes so if I type equals in that cell um, that tells Excel we're going to get Excel to do some calculations for us uh, we're going to take this cell here which is the number the millimeters of carbon or the volume of carbon dioxide in millimeters millimeters then hit the divided by sign which is the forward slash sign and then the time so millimeters milliliters per minute okay hit enter there's the first one okay so I'm going to do the same thing again milliliters divided by click on minutes enter equals uh, milliliters divided by minutes enter okay so there we've got those now there's a problem there already can you see that um, that's got 5.33333333 um, that looks pretty ordinary it'd be better if we had the same number of decimal places so I'm thinking it's probably sensible here to use one decimal place um, so I'm going to select all of those three cells there I'm going to come up here um, under on the home tab I'm going to come up here and use these um, increase or decrease decimal place, places button. So at the moment, I've got different decimal places. I'll just click on one of them. There we go. Now they've both got the same number of decimal places, but I'm just going to muck around with those buttons here until I get, I think it's sensible to have, given that it wasn't a particularly precise experiment, let's have one decimal place. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same thing down here. So equals... Um, the volume divided by the time, milliliters per minute, enter. Now, there's a quicker way of doing this. What I can do is I can actually just drag, if I grab, if I can autofill. So if I get this square here and see that, see that squared on the bottom right hand corner of the cell, I can drag that down like that. And that just puts exactly the same formula into those cells there. All right. So now I'm going to take another shortcut. I'm going to select those three cells there and I'm going to go, actually, you know what? Select those three cells there. I'm going to muck around with the decimal places there. So I've got one decimal place. Now I'm going to copy. So if I do control C, if I copy those three cells and come down here and control V, okay, I've pasted those three cells in here. So that's just made it a little bit quicker for me. So now I've got all my reaction rates per milliliters per minute. All right, I want to put those into my summary table over here. So first I need my acid concentration. So I'm going to go equals and I'll click on that cell there. Okay, so that puts 0 0.5 into that cell. Okay, this one here equals, click on that cell. So it'll just be whatever's in that cell there goes there. And then equals there. Okay, like that. So 0 0.5, 1, and 2. Um, now, I could have just typed 0 0.5 and typed 1 and typed 2. The, the, the nice thing about what I've done there by linking those cells, by putting equals 
whatever that cell is, is if I ever change this cell here, if this cell here, if I found out later that my acid concentration wasn't one molar, it was say 1.1 molar, and if I came in here and I typed 1.1, enter, then watch, when I press enter, watch what this cell here does. It automatically updates. So when you create a spreadsheet like this, if you can link cells by, instead of just typing the number again, type equals that cell, um, then whenever we update a cell, it automatically ripples all the way through. All right, trial one um, for let's see, this is this is all for for my 0 0.5 molar for my half molar. Um, trial one for my half a molar is this one here, this cell here. So I'm going to go equals that cell there. Okay. Um, trial one for my one molar is this cell down here. So I'm going to go equals and click this cell here. Again, equals this cell here. You get the idea? Yeah. So trial two for my half molar, that's going to be this cell here. So equals that one. Enter equals that one there. Enter equals that one there. I'm going fairly quickly because you can um, replay this video, stop and replay the video if you need to. Okay, so now I've just got to put all my trial threes in. So equals that one there, trial three, equals trial three of my one molar, and equals trial three of my two molar. There we go. Now all my data is in this summary table. Now I need to calculate my averages. So what was my average for those three trials? So I can, I can use Excel's function. I could get out my calculator and I could go 5.3, 5.3 plus 6.0 plus 5.0 equals, then divide by 3, or I can just get Excel to do that for me. I can go equals, oh, equals, average, type the word average, and open brackets. Average of what? Average of these three cells. So I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to select those three cells there. Close my brackets. There you go. That's my average. So... Uh, again, equals average, average, open my brackets, there we go, those three cells, equals average, open my brackets of these three cells here. Okay, now I could, actually I could have, I could have just selected that first one and auto-filled, but um, I've typed those averages. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a graph. Um, now let's think, what do I want on my graph? I want these numbers here. The acid concentration, that's my independent variable, I want them on my horizontal axis. I want those down below the graph. And these uh, numbers here, they need to be on my vertical axis. So I need to select those numbers and those numbers, but all, all, not all the numbers in between. So the way I do that is if I first I select those numbers. Now if I hold down my control key, and I, then I can select those numbers as well. So holding down the control key allows me to add a second selection to my first selection. So now I've got those two selections made. Now I'm ready to insert my graph. So if I go to insert, and then I'm going to choose uh, this button here, which is an XY graph, not a line graph. Uh, there's a difference. Um, these are two, I've got two sets of numerical data, so I want an XY scatter chart. Um, so I'm going to click on XY scatter chart. I'm just going to use the first one. I'm going to put my own trend line in later. So uh, let's just let's put, click on XY scatter plot like that. Okay, and there I can just move that around. Um, whenever you move a graph like this, don't grab um, an object. So like don't grab, don't don't click on the chart title, or don't click on the the grid or don't click on the you know don't click on an object on the graph otherwise it'll just move that object if you want to move the whole title grab I usually come up here on the background somewhere and grab the background of the graph and move it around um, okay so I'll put it where I want it I want it there and I might even change the size of it a little bit yeah, let's make it like that all right um, so let's uh, let's put in a meaningful chart title so I guess we would call this um, I don't know um, Reaction rates uh, depending, oh, spelled correctly, incorrectly, depending on acid concentration. 
So some sort of meaningful title, maybe you can think of a more meaningful title, but that seems reasonable to me. So that whoever's looking at my graph knows what it's about. Okay, um, again, I'm gonna click on a, up, right up on the top right corner of this graph here, and I'm gonna click this plus button because what I want is I want some axis titles. I shouldn't have these title, these uh, numbers without some explanation of what the numbers mean. So I'm gonna click on the plus, and I'm gonna click on axis titles, and if I click there, That'll give me both my vertical axis title and my horizontal axis title. So on my titles, I need to click, let's uh, click inside inside the title there, and I'm going to, uh, let's just delete that text there, or just highlight that text that I'm going to type over the top of it. Let's see, that, that, um, that vertical axis, that is the um, average reaction rate in mils per minute, isn't it? So I'm going to type here reaction rate, and in brackets, milliliters per minute. So, uh, so we've typed what the numbers actually mean and what the units are. Reaction rate in mils per minute. Um, we could um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do something even better than reaction rate. I'm going to put, we could, uh, we could put in uh, carbon dioxide produced. Carbon dioxide produced. Uh, in mils per minute. You know, if I wanted to be really accurate, I could say rate of carbon dioxide production, couldn't I? But that's uh, that's sufficient there, I think. Carbon dioxide produced in milliliters per minute. Okay. Uh, now this bottom one here, this bottom axis title. Um, if I control A, if I just select that to select the whole title. Uh, let's see. These numbers down here. What do they mean? That's the acid concentration, isn't it? So acid concentration, and the units are capital M for molar, molarity, so in mole, moles per litre, um, or molarity. So uh, there, I've got, now I've got uh, my axis titles. Um, I've got my title. Uh, the only other thing I want is I want a trend line. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go plus, and I'm going to come down to trend line. So if I just click on trend line like that, there we go. That, that gives me a trend line. There we go. Now, um, we haven't got enough information from only three data points to see whether it's a, a parabolic trend or a linear trend. So I'm just going to put, based on those three data points there, I'm just going to put, uh, make it a, a, a straight line. That's, so let's just do that. All right, um, so now you're ready to, um, if you want to cut and paste this data, you can just select that table like that. Control C to copy it, go and copy it into your report. And uh, this one here, this graph, you can just again select on the background, Control C to copy it, and then paste it into your report. Okay, I think that's all I need to show you.